Welcome back, one and all, to the Weekender's Edge. I am your host, Nick Simonson, outdoors writer with my materials online at NewsDakota.com and DakotaEdge.com. Great to be with you here as we get into the month of May. So let's take the next three days, wrap them all up into three minutes so you can get the most out of your outdoor activities. And this weekend should allow for it. Starting out on Friday the 6th, we will see a wake-up low of around 50 degrees with highs getting into those middle 60s, making for a nice day. However, breezy conditions we will experience once again with winds southeast 20 to 25 miles an hour throughout most of the day. Clouds will be building in from morning till evening going from partly cloudy to mostly cloudy by sunset so be aware of that. You'll have those low light conditions for those walleyes that are out there on your favorite waters. Turning to Saturday the 7th, windy is the word as those southeast gusts kick up 30 to 40 miles an hour maximum throughout the day. A stronger chance of continued light rain builds in later in the day and into evening so get your fishing in around dawn before things get gusty and damp in the afternoon. Perhaps we'll have a quarter inch for the day or so of rain, keeping our eye on that with the most significant rains in the evening before midnight, but not a soaker as we've seen in the past. Lows will be around 50, highs again in the middle 60s, and those winds will be noticeable, maxing out around 40 miles an hour with sustained speeds of 25. Turning to Sunday the 8th, drizzly conditions persist, but there will be no major downpours. The low will again be around 50 degrees with highs up around the 60 degree mark. The Cheyenne River will continue to drop below flood stage. Look for those levels in valleys city and the surrounding area to be about 14 feet according to the national weather service so those fishing opportunities for pre-spawn smallmouth bass and those running walleyes that we're seeing right now will materialize as things get better and those waters settle down so while the weekend is windy a few calm days this week have helped north dakota game and fish department agents start their spring crowing counts for rooster pheasants we caught up with north dakota game and fish upland game biologist rj gross to learn more about the process we got a hundred of them spread out across the state into our four districts that we use basically north Northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. And we run those three times between May 1st and June 10th. And you got to start half hour before sunrise. And they take about an hour. They're 20 miles. And every two miles you stop, get out, listen for two minutes, count the number of pheasant crows that you hear, and then continue that on for 10 stops. We take the average of those, of the highest counts, and that's how we'll break it down by the districts and then statewide. Compare that from year to year, any long-term average, five-year, 10-year, things like that. I'm expecting it to be down hopefully not too much and not because of the winter or anything like that the northwest might have seen a little bit of loss because of the last couple really bad april storms but i I really think we had such a good winter before that i think bird should have been in pretty good shape so i'm I'm hopeful there that was rj gross upland game biologist with the north dakota game and fish department giving us the insight on crowing counts that wraps up the show for this week folks have a safe and enjoyable one for the weekender's edge i'm nick simonson Good fishing to ya.